Did anybody solve the word jumble for chapter 27? Uh, it is called runaway. So we'll move on to chapter 28 now. And the letters for, for that are N, T, O, I, U, S, L, O. Since it was only one o'clock in the afternoon when I arrived on Granville Island, walking away from the bus stop and along the road that traveled under the Granville Street Bridge, I had a lot of time to kill. Luckily for me, it was a beautiful day, so I spent a couple of hours on a bench by the water, eating two of my cheese sandwiches and reading Ink Spell and dozing in the sunshine. Then I took out a bunch of quarters and paid to go to the miniature train museum. I'd been there only once, but it was a great place especially the working model train set with its own separate room. The man who ran it didn't seem to mind that I stayed for a long time, and he told me all about the different model ships and planes he also had on display. I spent the rest of my afternoon and evening watching the buskers perform for money, including a sword swallower and an excellent magician who used me as an assistant for one of his tricks. It felt nice being among the throngs of locals and tourists enjoying their Sunday, Although, to be honest, all my gear was getting a little heavy to lug around, especially my quarters. Since it was mid-May, it didn't get really dark until close to 10 o'clock. But when it did get dark, the feeling on the island changed. It didn't feel super dangerous or anything, just lonely, even though there were quite a few people around enjoying the restaurants and theaters. But by midnight, most people had cleared out, and I had that overwhelming feeling again that I was a mere speck in the universe. It wasn't a terrible sensation or even a depressing one, just, I don't know, sort of profound and true, and it made me kind of melancholy. I sat down by the water's edge and looked at all the lights shining brightly in the buildings downtown. I thought about all the people going about their lives in those buildings, and, and I thought about my mom, who by now was probably worried sick. I got up and found a payphone by the visitor center and used one of my quarters to call home. She picked up halfway through the first ring. Ambrose? I could hear f the fear in her voice. Hi, Mom. Oh, thank goodness, Ambrose. Where are you? I can't tell you. Is someone telling you to say that? Just answer yes or no. I'm alone, Mom. Then let me come get you. We can talk. I hung up then, because I'd seen enough movies to know that the police could trace my call if I stayed on too long. Then I wandered over to the water park, which hadn't opened for the summer season yet. I thought about pulling out my sleeping bag and camping out under some bushes for the night, but then I saw a bunch of homeless guys. They were setting up camp with their shopping carts near some of the bushes nearby, and even though, some were, even though they were probably harmless, like Preacher Paul, I didn't really want to stick around to find out. So I walked to the far end of the island, past the Emily Carr School of Art, to the Granville Island Hotel. It was a low-rise building, and if I was ever lucky enough to be able to stay in a hotel in my own city, I would choose this one because it looked so friendly and so quiet and so off the beaten path. The doorman was busy helping some people into the car, so I scooted inside. There were washrooms down a side corridor, and I slipped into the men's with my stuff. It was warm in there, if a little smelly, a mix of disinfectant and pee. I locked myself into a stall and put the seat down on the toilet and did my best to get comfortable, unzipping my sleeping bag and wrapping it around me like a blanket. Then I took out the picture of my dad laughing and propped it on the toilet tank. I wish mom could remember the joke you used to... I wish mom could remember the joke she told you to make you laugh so hard, I said to him looking at his smiling face. Then I closed my eyes and tried not to feel too scared as I settled in for the night. It's not something I'd recommend to anyone sleeping on a toilet. All night, I drifted in and out of sleep, mostly out, and my body was sore and achy all over. About six o'clock, the washroom door banged open. I could see a cleaning lady's cart and a cleaning lady's feet. She was singing tunelessly to herself. I peered under the stall. She was a big, cheerful-looking woman, and she was wearing an iPod. She didn't seem to notice that the last stall was occupied. When she entered the first stall to scrub the toilet, I jumped up and ran out, cl clutching my backpack and my shopping bag and the photo of my dad, 
my sleeping bag flapping around my shoulders like I was a superhero. I ran right out of the hotel and I was pretty sure that no one saw me leave. So far so good in my new life as a fugitive. I ate two more cheese sandwiches and refilled my water bottle at the water park fountain. Then at 6.50, I found the same payphone I'd used to call my mom. Only this time, I called the Economopolises. Ambrose, your mama. She's sick with worry, said Mrs. E when she picked up the phone. Is Cosmo back? Suddenly, he was on the line. Ambrose, you idiot, where the heck are you? Did they charge you? No, they let me go with a warning. What about Silvio? He had some outstanding warrants for his arrest. They're keeping him until they set a trial date. Good. Now tell me where you are. I can't. Your mom is going crazy. I don't want to move. I know you don't. I have to hang up now in case you're having my call traced. Ambrose, you watch too much TV. I hung up. I wandered over to the market, which was already showing signs of life, even though it was only 7 o'clock. The shop owners were laying out their produce, and trucks were making deliveries of fish, and I could smell bread and cookies baking. It made me ravenous all over again, and I sat down by water's edge and ate my second-to-last cheese sandwich. When the market officially opened at 8, I ducked into one of the public washrooms and carefully counted out five dollars and quarters and put them in my pocket. Then I went to a bakery and after making the shoe shopkeeper swear that there were no peanuts in anything, I bought an enormous blueberry muffin and an equally enormous chocolate chip cookie since my mom wasn't around to tell me not to. I pocketed my change and took my treats outside. When I ate them, I considered my options. I only had about $50 in quarters left, and I knew they wouldn't last me very long, even if I only had to use them for food. I thought about stealing, but that just wasn't my style, and besides, it could get me arrested. I thought about garbage picking or dumpster diving, but that was simply too gross, and with my peanut allergy, it could also be deadly. If I couldn't steal or pick garbage, I concluded that there was only one option left. I had to earn some money, which meant I had to get a job. I went back inside the market and asked a few of the shopkeepers if they needed any help, but they either laughed at me or ignored me. One guy looked at me in my backpack and my canvas shopping bag suspiciously and said, Where are your parents? Shopping, I lied. There they are now. I pointed to a couple strolling nearby and pretended to join them before heading back outside. I was stumped. If I couldn't get a job, how could I make money? Then I glanced down and my eyes just happened to land on my Scrabble board, sticking out of the top of my canvas bag. And that's when the light bulb went on in my head. I had, if I do say so myself, a totally brilliant idea. That is chapter 28. Uh, we'll see you next time for chapter 29.